All right, so I'll mute you all, but you can always unmute if you'd like to ask a question, say anything. And welcome, pre-holiday special class. So we'll do a 30 minute asana class, which will just give us a very um, you know, succinct way of getting into the practice that we've been doing all along, right? We've, we've done other 30 minute practices, but you know, we'll do bone healthy asana class focusing on the breath. And then we'll do, a, a, we'll come down to the floor at the end and do at least a five pointed star, like sort of the beginning of Shavasana. If you're wanting to um, um, just stay there and not do yoga nidra, you can just turn off your camera and stay and do Shavasana, or you can, uh, we'll transition, we'll have to sit up and get our, our self ready for yoga nidra, which requires a few blankets and <laughs> cushy things to make ourselves comfortable. All right, so let's start our half an hour practice of asana in a standing position today. Let's start with standing, get the body moving. All righty. And then in your feet are on your mat or whatever surface you're on and you're spreading your toes, kind of rocking back and forth, waking up the ankles a bit, the feet, the ankles, the joints in the feet, kind of setting down your pinky toes, next toe, middle toe, next toe, kind of in a very spread wide open as best you can. Having Connection to your feet is the essence of it. Notice if the weight is forward on your toes or back on your heels, trying to even that out <clears throat> between the toes and the heels and have that placement of pressing down in a way so you engage up into your legs, softening the knees slightly as you engage up into the upper legs. The sit bones draw toward one another, pubic bone and tailbone draw toward one another, the lower belly drawing in and up. Migrate the spine forward into the body, collarbones are broad, and the ears are balanced over the shoulders. And arrive here in your mountain pose as you gaze down your cheeks and turn your attention to your breath. Just these first few breaths through your nose are just taking inventory. Noticing the sensation of the breath, the duration that your lungs can accommodate right here, right now, without any other movements or any other stretching or wherever you've come from, you're arriving here as you are. Maybe slowly start to increase the length of your inhale and you pause. You increase the length of your exhale and pause. Go back and forth. On your next inhale, you'll raise your gaze. Be aware of your place in the room. And we'll move a little bit with the breath and sort of a modified sun salutation, essentially. So we'll inhale, swing the arms out and up, move the gaze up and touch. And then exhale, hinge at the hips coming into your child, or sorry, your chair pose. And then inhale, lift the heart as you swing the hands back. Exhale, deepen and reach the hands forward, deepen into the squat. And then inhale, straighten the legs, reach to the ceiling. Then exhale, hands come back down by your side. You can modify the arm arms as much as you like with your shoulders. Inhale, swing the arms out and up. Exhale, sink into chair pose. Inhale, swing the hands back and lift the chest forward, a little cobra. And then exhale, sinking and lifting the hands. Inhale, straighten the legs, reach to the ceiling and exhale. Hands come down a couple more times like that. Go ahead and do that at your own pace. Try 
trying to coordinate the movement with the breath at your own pace. Let's do one more. And then exhaling, you're pausing in your mountain pose and just noticing sensation, noticing breath, heart, And then hands to your waist. You're gonna step your feet wide. We'll come into triangle pose on the right side. So your right toes turn towards the right, left toes slightly in. Pressing the feet down and away. Raise the hands up at shoulder height. As you inhale in here, exhale, you hinge over that right hip and the right hand comes down. The left hand could go into the air or could it rest on your waist? Your hand is gently on whatever surface, the right hand is gently using that surface just as a touchstone as you hinge into the hips, collarbones stay broad, that left hand raising is optional completely. Noticing what's happening in your neck, feel space in both sides of your neck, strength in your legs, breathing deeply. And pushing through the feet, inhale, coming up, arms go wide. And let's just pivot the feet to the other side to do left side triangle. Pushing the feet down in a way, lifting the chest. And exhale, hinging over second side. And down, maybe the right hand's on the waist or maybe it reaches to the ceiling. Strong legs, most of the pose is in the legs, scissoring apart. Notice if that left ear is dropping close to the shoulder, keep it spacious around the neck. And pushing through the feet, inhale, bringing the torso up, arms go wide, hands to the waist, feet have come to parallel. Nice. And separate the feet out a little bit further apart. And then turning the right toes toward the right, left toes in, bending into your right knee for warrior two stance. So the chest still stays to the side, bending into that right knee. Nice. Arms are up to a T. Gazing over your right fingertips. Rolling the palms up so the shoulders roll away from the ears and then just flipping the palms back down for a moment. Keeping the chest lifted, gazing over your right fingertips, pushing the feet down and away from one another. Tailbone is heavy and the belly lifts. Take one more inhale here. And exhale, hinge over that right hip. Left hand can wait on the waist as you either bring the hand down to the thigh or the forearm to the thigh, or maybe the hand on the block or the floor. Rolling the left ribs up, reaching that left hand up and over at an angle. Push through the left heel, reaching up through the left pinky fingers. Gazing forward or down or up, wherever the neck feels comfortable. Listening for the sound of your breath. And then inhale, coming up through warrior two, straightening that right leg, turn the toes toward the side, hands to the waist and pausing here. And then switching over to the other side, left toes pivot over, right toes slightly in, bending into that left knee, knee is over the ankle, chest stays to the side and open up the arms, shoulder height. And gazing over your left fingertips, let's flip the palms to accentuate that rolling of the shoulders back, and the palms just slip under. The chest stays lifted, the belly's lifted, the tailbone's heavy. Spreading the toes and pressing and stretching the mat away from your, or between your feet.
Take one more inhale here and exhale, hinging over, coming into side angle here, either forearm on thigh, hand to the thigh or hand to the floor or a block and right arm swings up at an angle. Again, all these arm positions are optional. Could be reaching to the ceiling if that feels more spacious. Push back through your right heel. Feel long through the right side of your lungs, breathing here. And inhale, coming back up through warrior two, straightening the left leg, turn the toes toward the side, hands to the waist and pausing here. Nice. Now let's turn back towards the right side, but this time as you turn towards the right side, your whole torso faces the short end of your mat and you separate the feet left to right. So your hips are square to the end of the mat. The legs could be straight for now. You could shorten that stance to feel really rooted here. And we'll come into that Bini Yoga Warrior One position where the fingertips start at the collarbones. So making sure that you're squaring the hips to the end of the mat. So the feet are separated left to right. So you're shifting everything towards the end, Warrior One, yeah. Okay, fingertips on the collarbones. And as you take an inhale, you release the hands, lift the elbows away and bend into the knee and the heart comes forward. Feel a slight lift in the upper body and you exhale, come back to straight leg, fingers to the collarbones. Inhale, bending into the knee, lift the chest. Exhaling, come back. Inhale, bending the knee, lift the chest. Exhaling back, make any adjustments you need to for your legs to feel strong and supported. Back and forth with your own breath. Complete the one you're on and do one more after that. When you're done with that one, you'll step forward to your mountain pose and pause here. Nice and switch sides. So right foot steps back, left foot is forward. The hips stay parallel to the short end of your mat. So you're in more of a warrior one position. Yeah. Straight legs, fingertips to the collarbones. And as you inhale, bend into the knee, swing the arms out, lift the chest. Exhaling, straighten and bring it back. Inhale, lean and lift. Exhaling back, nice. Continue like that, your own breath cycle. Feeling the breath lifting the torso. And keeping the spine long with the exhale. Complete the one you're on and do one more after that. And when you're done with that one, you step to your mountain pose and pausing here. Nice. And you're from the mountain pose, bringing your hands to your waist. You're gonna shift all your weight over to your right leg. I'll mirror you. Right leg is grounding, left knee comes up and out. So you're externally rotating the hip, coming into tree pose. So you can bring the heel above the ankle and work on lifting the toes or bringing the foot into the calf or all the way up into the inner thigh. You choose. Steady breath, steady gaze. Steady body, maybe 
changing that position. The arms could be as they were in the warrior one or up or down or at your heart. Stay at your waist. Breathing here, hugging the muscles into the bones of your right leg. Lifting up to the center of your body. Take one more inhale here and exhale, hands to the waist. Inhale, bringing the knee forward and exhale, foot comes down. Pausing in your mountain pose. Nice. Shifting over to the other side, bending the knee forward and out. Choosing your tree pose on this side. Maybe it's the same height, maybe it's different. Yeah. Moving your pant leg to get this, <laughs> that's a good idea so that you don't have that slippery surface. Choosing a hand position that feels spacious and grounding at the same time, breathing here. Take one more inhale here. Exhale, hands back to the waist. Inhale, bring your knee forward and exhale, foot comes down. Nice. Okay, let's separate the feet out. About wide as your mat, toes out, heels slightly in. And then inhale, swing the arms up and exhale, bend the knees over the toes, cross the arms, push through the legs, inhaling up. Exhale down, inhaling up, exhale down. One more time up. On this exhale, you hang out in your squat, wherever that may be. Maybe the hands are on the thighs, maybe the forearms are on the thighs, maybe elbows and knees. Adjust accordingly. Feet distance can change. Being buoyant in the legs, you're not just hanging out in the in the soft tissues, the ligaments are that sort of thing. Lifting the chest, finding your breath. Take one more inhale here. On your exhale, you're gonna bring yourself to hands and knees. So make your way to hands and knees from here, gently and gracefully. Placing a blanket under your knees if you'd like some extra cushioning there. Palms are underneath your shoulders, spreading the fingers as wide as you can so that webbing is open between the fingers and thumbs. Knees are underneath your hips, toes drawing back. And then taking that left leg back behind you, press into the ball of the foot, reaching through the calf. Keep the left hand grounded. Take your right hand forward, palm faces center. Lift the belly to the spine and push the left foot off the floor to hip height. Reaching long and tall here. Find the balance on the right knee. Threading the left fingers, reaching through the floating limbs. Take one more inhale here. Then exhale, the right hand comes down below the shoulder, but take the left foot toward the right side of your mat onto the floor. Turning towards your left, you reach the left hand to the ceiling, and then exhale, turn the left hand towards the front of the mat. So you're on your right hand, right knee, left toes. We have a modified side plank. Separate the, the right knee and the left foot so you're not in one balance beam, so you have balance there. Breathing here. And then inhale, reaching the left hand to the ceiling and exhale, turn back towards the mat, hands and knees. Nice. And turn to the other side, right foot steps back, press into the ball of the foot. So you're stretching the toes, stretching the ball of the foot, reaching through the calf. Keep the right hand grounded, left hand comes forward, palm facing center. 
Lift the belly to the spine and push the right foot off the floor to hip height. Inhale, floating limbs a little higher, reaching long, breathing here, gazing down to the floor. Take one more inhale here and exhale. The left hand comes down to the floor. Take your right foot across the mat, off to the left side, turning towards your right. Reach up to the ceiling as you inhale with your right hand. Exhale, reach the right hand toward the front of the mat. Long side line, breathing here. And then inhale, reach the right hand to the ceiling. Exhale, turn back towards hands and knees. Breathing here. And let's take one plank. So you could either do forearm plank onto your forearms if you prefer that, if your wrists are a little tired at this point, or you could do one leg back at a time, a few breaths, or you could take both legs back into high plank. We'll hold it here for a few breaths. You choose forearm. If you're doing one leg at a time, after a couple breaths, you switch. Breathing here. Feel the lower belly drawing to the spine. Take one more inhale here. And then exhale, bending knees to the floor. Graze the elbows along the ribs as you lower your chest to the floor. Palms stay underneath your shoulders, untuck your toes. And then draw your hands back next to your ribs so your elbows are drawing up. Lift the nape of the neck, draw the chest forward. Extend through the toes so the spine stays long. Lifting. In either continuing to press with the hands, holding yourself up with your hands, or maybe releasing some of that pressure in the hands so you rely more on the back muscles, lifting the nape of the neck, breathing here. Take one more inhale here. Exhale, slowly lower the chin, release the arms down alongside of you. And then next inhale, we'll come into locust pose. So the soles of the feet come off the floor. Nape of the neck comes off the floor. Maybe the palms come off the floor as well. Reaching actively through the toes and the crown of the head goes in the opposite direction. Chest comes forward, nape of the neck lifts. Breathing here. Take one more inhale here. And then exhale, slowly lower down. And bring your right hand forward. Turn toward your left to roll yourself onto your back. And come onto your back from there. Nice. Once you get onto your back, so what we'll take our counter pose from that. You can bring your hands onto your kneecaps, your feet are on the floor, your knees are bent, hands on your kneecaps. Take a big inhale here and then exhale, slowly draw the knees toward the chest, deep in that exhale with the belly drawing back to the spine. Inhale, release the hold or lengthen the spine or lengthen the arms rather. Exhale, drawing the knees to the chest. So back and forth. Hugging the knees in. That exhale really deepens the, ex the draw. Exhaling, knees in. Inhaling. And one more time, exhale. The next inhale, you release that left foot down to the floor and hug your right knee up to your chest. And maybe you interlace the fingers around the front of the shin. Reaching through that left heel as if you're standing on the foot. So the left heel is reaching away from you, toes are drawing toward you. You could even do that right with the right foot as well. So both feet are flexed. Noticing your hip socket. And then keeping hold of that right knee, swing the left arm out to shoulder height, out to the side and rotate the right hip out to the side keeping the left hip rooted. So you don't have to go that far. Maybe the elbow comes down to the floor to hold the knee out. 
Breathing here. And then rotating, inhaling back to the center position. And then drawing the left knee up to meet the right. And straighten the right leg down to the floor as you keep holding the left knee up. Reaching through the left heel and maybe flexing the left foot as well. Working into the hip socket, reaching through the right heel. And then we're holding on to just the the um, shin with your left hand, right hand comes out to the side, rotating the left hip out to the side. Noticing rotation in the hip socket and keeping the right hip rooted to the floor. And then slowly rotating back to the center, bringing both knees up. And then exhaling, dropping the feet to the floor, knees stay bent, arms come out to the side. So knees are bent, feet are out to the edges of the mat, so that's wide, the feet are wide. And then arms are out, and then you're gonna exhale, draw both knees over to the left and gaze over to the right. And inhale, the feet stay on the floor, so you're walking back and forth like windshield wipers. Inhale, gazing to the ceiling, and then exhale, Knees go over to the right, gaze over to the left. Inhale, knees come up, gaze to the ceiling. Exhale, knees come over and gaze to the right. So feet stay on the floor if possible. So we're rotating in the hip socket, rotating and rocking on the back of the sacrum and the back of the skull and the bottoms of the feet. Next time your knees come over to the right hand side, you can pause there with the knees over to the right. Push a little bit through your left heel. Maybe your right ankle comes on top of your left thigh, or maybe it stays down. Gaze to the ceiling and release into the shape. Breathing here. And if your right ankle's on top of your thigh, you'll exhale that foot down to the edge of the mat. Inhale, bringing the knees up. And exhale, knees go over to the left. Pushing a little bit through the right heel. Once you get there, maybe the left ankle comes on top of the right, giving a little extra intention on internal rotation. Completely optional. Gaze is to the ceiling and the breath is steady. Breathing here. And then if your left ankle's on your thigh, you'll exhale that foot down to the floor. Inhale, bringing your knees up. And exhale, straighten the legs out wide, wider than your mat. Arms are out wide. And adjusting your hips and shoulders to release your spine fully into the floor beneath you. The legs are on the floor. You're in the five-pointed star. Palms are up and you're releasing the full weight of your body into the surface beneath you. Being aware of the space all around you.
If you'd like to stay right here and not participate in yoga nidra, you're welcome to do that. But if you want to do yoga nidra, you'll straighten your legs, straighten your arms and give yourself a stretch for a moment. Roll over to one side and then using your hands and arms, gently make your way up to a seated position and we'll get ourselves set up for yoga nidra. As I mentioned in the email, you'll want to have maybe an extra mat. If you have two mats, you could put a mat on top of a mat, or maybe you have a, another blanket you can put on top of your mat, something that gives you extra cushion underneath. You'll have maybe one blanket folded in such a way that when you have your arms out, you'll be somewhat cushion underneath the wrist, especially in the upper arm. So it's kind of angled out like your arms. If you put something underneath your head, I recommend it being not too high. We wanna have the spine as long as possible. So you can have this little cushion underneath your um, underneath your head, your skull, and then a bolster or a blanket or a pillow underneath your knees, which will be comfortable to your low back perhaps. And then I always recommend covering up, getting nice and cozy, especially since it's in most parts of the world, it's, it's kind of cold. You can cover yourself up with a blanket. If you have a scarf or a light towel to place over your eyes, or if you are in a room that you could close, turn off the lights or something, but having less input from the outside light is helpful. If you have an eye, pat or eye pillow, it's always nice. Mary Beth, are we on our backs? Yes, on your backs. If if that's okay. you know, if you want to be, I don't understand what you were doing with the bolster or what. Could you like demonstrate? Mm -hmm. Sure. So I have the blankets out at an angle for my arms. The bolster would be underneath my knees as I lay down, like this, and then covering up and placing a blanket or something over my eyes. Does that make sense, Sue? Susan. Okay. Good. Yeah, having your knees, you're slightly bent when you're lying down gives your back a little relief sometimes. Sometimes that's a little bit too much. Maybe you don't want that and you wanna just lie in a regular Shavasana position and that's more comfortable for you. But yeah, on your back, I've known people doing this even in their beds, but, <laughs> but we're kind of replicating a bed position. Get yourself all kind of cozy. And make any adjustments as you lie there for a moment. You can just adjust, making sure you're warm enough. That your position is one that will be comfortable for the duration of the practice. Because it's Best to remain still, but as you lie here, if something doesn't feel comfortable, rather than mentally grappling with that, feel free to make any adjustments during the practice. Yoga Nitya is, is a full body relaxation. It's 
the practice of yogic sleep and sense that it will guide you to this hypnagogic state, which is sort of that state of consciousness between wakefulness and sleeping. Yeah, Belinda? I stepped out to get something. Did you tell us how to lay down? How to lie down? Well, I um, mean, it, are our legs supposed to be some specific way? Well, just in some kind of comfortable lying position on your back, and maybe the legs are over a bolster, you know, under your knees. Um, cover it up if it feels like you want to be comfortable. And, yep. And then maybe something over your eyes. Okay. Thanks. Yep. So it's like a very restorative. If you've done restorative yoga, it's very similar to that kind of position. So try to remain awake by listening to the sound of my voice. You'll be asked to move your awareness to various bodily sensations, emotions, and images. Try not to concentrate too intensely as this may prevent you from relaxing actually. So, so just be receptive. During this meditation, Please use and absorb what you need in the moment and leave the rest behind. If your mind becomes overactive with thoughts and worries, just come back to the sound of my voice. Now become aware of any sounds you can hear in this moment. Nothing else but what you can hear without strain. Beginning to focus on the most distant sounds that you can hear. Letting your sense of hearing radiate outward. Searching out those distant sounds and following them for a moment. Move your attention from sound to sound without labeling the source. Gradually bring your attention to closer sounds. Sounds outside the building or sounds inside the building, sounds inside the room. Without opening your eyes, visualize the four walls of the room you're in. And the ceiling and the floor. Your body lying on the floor. Visualize your body lying on the floor. Position of your body, your clothes, your hair, your face. Become acutely aware of the existence of your physical body lying on the floor. And become aware of your natural breath. Become aware of your natural and spontaneous breath that moves in and out of your body without any effort. The natural breath flows in through both nostrils. Noticing the feeling of the breath as it comes in and out of your nostrils. And there's maybe a sense of coolness as you inhale the breath. 
And following this feeling into your nose, your sinuses, the back of your throat, into your lungs. There's a sense of warmth as you exhale the breath. Feel this warmth on your upper lip as you breathe out. Natural breath flows through both nostrils during the inhale and the exhale. Allowing your breath to become longer and slower. Take a long, slow inhale, followed by a longer, slower exhale. Make your exhale even slower, noticing that slight pause after the exhale. Slow inhale, even slower exhale and pause. Feeling that urge to breathe in, bubble up inside of you. When you need to inhale, please do so. Long inhale, longer exhale, and then pause where the body is neither breathing in nor out. And please continue breathing in this way. Now go back to that natural, easy breath, releasing any control over the inhale or exhale. We'll now begin a systematic journey of sensory awareness throughout the body. You'll move your awareness to different parts of your body as soon as you hear them named. And please say the name of the part to yourself and feel that part of the body, but do not move any part. So say the name to yourself, but feel that body, but don't move it. And practice begins on the right-hand side. So right-hand thumb. First finger, second finger, third finger, pinky finger. Palm of the hand. Back of the hand. wrist, forearm, elbow, upper arm, shoulder, Armpit, waist, right hip, right thigh, right knee. Half.
ankle. Heel. Sole of the foot. Top of the foot. Right big toe. Second toe. Third toe. Fourth toe. Pinky toe. Left hand thumb, first finger, second finger, third finger. Pinky finger. Palm of the hand. Back of the hand. Wrist. Forearm, elbow, upper arm, shoulder. Armpit. Left waist. Hip. Thigh. Knee, calf, ankle, heel. Sole of the foot. Top of the foot. Left big toe. Second toe. Third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe, pinky toe. Now go back to the back of the body. And think of the whole body.
And consider right heel, left heel. right calf, left calf. Right thigh, left thigh. Right buttock, left buttock. Lower back, middle back, upper back, entire spine, right shoulder blade. left shoulder blade, back of the neck, back of the head, top of the head, forehead. Right temple, left temple, right ear, left ear, right nostril. left nostril, right cheek, left cheek, right collarbone, left collarbone. Right side of the chest, left side of the chest, upper abdomen, navel, lower abdomen, right groin. Left groin, the pelvic floor, the whole right leg, whole left leg, whole right arm, whole left arm. Whole face, the whole head, the whole torso, the whole body, the whole body. the whole body. Now imagine the whole body becoming light as though your body could float away from the floor and toward the ceiling. The head is light and weightless. The limbs are light and weightless.
The torso is light and weightless. The whole body is light and weightless. You're rising higher and higher away from the floor. And imagine your body becoming heavy. Feel the heaviness in all parts of the body. Each part is becoming heavier and heavier and heavier. The head is heavy. The limbs are heavy. The torso is heavy. The whole body is heavy. So heavy that it's sinking down into the floor. Begin to concentrate on the space in front of your closed eyes. Imagine before you a transparent screen as though you were at a movie theater and the screen is as high and as wide as the eyes can see. Concentrate on this mind screen and become aware of the phenomena that manifests within it. You may see colors, patterns, light. Whatever you see is the manifesting state of your mind. Continue awareness of this space, but do not become involved. Practice detached awareness only. Any subtle images make themselves known, simply notice them without directing the images. If thoughts occur, let them come and go. We continue watching the dark space. Continue this with detached awareness. Awaken the experience of cold in the body. Experience of chilly cold. Imagine being outside in winter without enough clothing and you feel this chill permeating your entire body. Now allow the sensation of warmth to spread throughout the entire body. Remember the feeling of heat in summer when you are out in the sun with no shade. You feel heat radiating onto your skin. Heat all around the body. Now recollect the experience of anxiety and worry. Feel the stress in your mind and body, but do not concentrate on its source. Just create the experience of anxiety as clearly as possible. Now, allow the feeling of complete calm to envelop you. Manifest the experience of calm in your entire mind, body, and emotions. relaxed and aware. 
You're completely calm. Now, a number of the different things will be named and you should envision them on the level of emotion, on the level of memory and imagination as best as you can. Jump from one image to the next as soon as you hear it. Red desert. Peacock feather. Buddha meditating. Doctor's office. A good night's rest. Full moon. Your reflection in a mirror. Foggy morning. Waiting for results. Sun shining overhead. Bouquet of flowers. Tall tree. Receiving help from others. Cool, clear water. Making appointments. A relaxing afternoon. Laughing with friends. A warm embrace. Burning candle. Temple on a mountain. Path in the woods. Vibrant sunset. Taking a deep breath. Cat stretching. A beautiful garden path. Your favorite song. The sound of my voice. Your body lying on the floor. Now come back to the feeling of your breath flowing in and out of your nostrils.
Maintain your awareness of breath and at the same time, develop your awareness of your physical body. Your body is relaxed and lying on the floor. Feel the container of your skin, and the clothes and the props that are touching you. Notice the heaviness of your body as it rests on the floor and take your awareness into all the points that are touching the floor. The back of the heels, the thighs, the buttocks, shoulder blades, arms, hands, head. Do not open your eyes yet, but visualize the surrounding room. Imagine where you are in the room and the other objects that are around you. And lie quietly until you feel ready to move. Slowly moving your hands and feet when you're ready. Take your time, there's no hurry. When you're sure you're fully awake, you can gently open your eyes. Roll to one side when you're ready and stay there for a moment. Using your hands and your arms, gently make your way up to a seated position. Practice of Yoga Nidra is now complete. Thank you so much for sharing your practice, your energy, and your breath. May your hearts be filled with loving kindness. May you be peaceful and at ease. May you be healthy and well-nourished. And may you be happy. Namaste. I'll turn the recording off. Happy to stay on to chat if you want.